timers. You are going to be timing the time it takes for 10 full cycles. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a standing wave. For example, class, how many antinodes? One, Try that again, how many three, antinodes? Two, one, one. one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got distracted because that was impressive. How many locations of constructive interference? One. One, one antinode. How many locations of destructive interference? Two. Two, one on each end, two nodes. Okay, so this would be one antinode and two nodes. If I increase the frequency, you can see that we have how many antinodes? Two. two. How many nodes? Three. And if I increase the frequency, which I'm going to do, you will see more and more antinodes and nodes. Timers. One antinode. I'm going to say three, two, one, zero. When I get to zero, you're going to start. Then I will count up to 10, and then you will stop when I get to 10. The goal here is to time 10 full cycles. Timers, do you understand? Everybody got it? All right, here we go. Three, two, one, zero. One, two, that was terrible. I'm sorry, I got hurt. It was like, click, 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 click. We'll consider that a trial run. We'll try again. All right, timers, are you zero? Yes. Three, two, one, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Timers, could you please tell your times? Uh, 8.78. You're writing all those times down. Just like. Yep, one, one under the other. 8.78. 8.85. 8.84. One thing I should point out is I have set down specific pieces of tape here. These two pieces of tape are six meters apart so that we know the length of this spring is six meters. I'm now going to switch to two antinodes. Timers, are you ready? Three, two, one, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 4.59. Four point five four. Four point six six. So you can tell that the time for ten cycles is decreasing because the number of cycles per second is increasing. Class, how many antinodes? Three. How many nodes? Four. Notice timers. It's faster. Are you ready? Three, two, one, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 2.97. 3.06. 2.97. And now, hopefully, we're going to get to. <coughs> How are you doing, Trevor? Good. Good. Class, is this for antinodes? Yeah. Great. Timers. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. So these are all times for various uh, number of antinodes for 10 full cycles. And what we're going to end up doing from that is figuring out the, the speed of the wave in this standing wave. But we're also going to do it a different way. So I can send down a pulse, and you'll notice it goes back and forth. And we can actually time how long it takes to go back and forth twice. So timers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3, 2, 1, pulse and then I'll tell you when to stop. I'll say stop after we've gone there and back again twice. Timers, you ready? Three, two, one, pulse. Stop. And this is just a separate table. Just put down these three times for now. Just over to the right somewhere. Uh, 1.9. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. 
full scanning wave cycles. That's what we have here. What we have here is just the time for a wave pulse to travel. How far? Remind me, how far between the pieces of tape? Six meters. So to travel how far? Twenty-four. There and back again twice to travel twenty-four meters. So we can figure out the speed. It's just going to be equal to distance divided by the time. Or twenty-four meters divided by, I need the average time. So 1.9 plus 1.94 plus 2 divided by 3. This is going to be crushed by. It was like it when I opened it. Sure, but. <laughs> 24 divided by uh, average time. 1.9466. Thank you. 1.946, so the speed. And I'm going to need help with numbers today, so people need to, you know, use the calculator as well. The speed. That's plenty, thank you. So we'll just go with 12.3 meters per second. So that's one way to figure out the speed. That's just measuring the, the wave pulse as it goes back and forth here. My whole point is that that's what's going on in the standing waves. It's just that you don't see it because there are a bunch of wave pulses going back and forth and constructively and destructively interfering. So what we're going to do now is we're going to figure out that same velocity using all of these numbers. So we have, so far, these are the change in time for the three different trials. We need the change in time average for each one of these, please, in seconds. So could I please have those numbers? <coughs> From left to right, as you get them, please. First one's 8.82. Four point five nine six six six. Great. Ooh, this one works out to be three point zero exactly, doesn't it? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. Two point three six three three three. three. Great. So that is the time, again, for 10 full standing wave cycles. Okay. How do I then figure out the period if we have the time for 10 full cycles? Divided by 10, right? So we all, all we have to do is take our delta T average and divide by 10 to get the period. So it actually works out to be just moving the decimal over uh, 1 here. 0 0.8823 repeating, 0 0.4596 repeating, 0 0.30 repeating, and 0 0.2363 repeating. The frequency, we know, is just 1 over the period. So we can figure out the frequency for each of these. So could I please have one over each of these? Uh, 
Great. Three point three three. Four point two three one three. Great. That is the frequency in hertz. In order to figure out the velocity, we are going to use the equation velocity equals the frequency times the wavelength. That will give us the velocity in meters per second. But we do not have the wavelength yet in meters. So we need to figure out the wavelength for each of these. We will start with just looking at the picture. We know the distance between them is 6.0 meters between the two ends. And the first one with one antinode, the way we draw it, so we draw standing waves, it looks like this. Dotted lines representing where the wave is at various times. It goes up and down. That is our figure. <coughs> now, L is equal to how many wavelengths when we have one antidote? That's the question. L is equal to how many wavelengths? Jim? Half of a wavelength. If you look at it, this is half of our wavelength. In order to get to one full wavelength, we actually have to continue it because the wavelength is all the way from there to there. So the length, L, is only equal to half a wavelength. So the wavelength then is equal to 2 times L or 2 times 6 or 12 meters. So this is 12 meters. We can do the same thing with two antinomes. L equals how many wavelengths in this particular case? Um, ben? Six meters. Ah, so how many wavelengths? Uh, one. One wavelength, right? This is one wavelength. So L is just one wavelength, so the wavelength equals six meters. Three antinodes, <coughs> four nodes, in this particular case, L equals how many wavelengths? Carpenter? It's not two wavelengths. In other words, we don't see two wavelengths in there. It's okay. How many wavelengths? Rishon? One and a half. One and a half. This is one wavelength. And then this is half a wavelength. So it's three over two or one and a half wavelengths. Therefore, the wavelength is equal to 2L over 3, or 2 times 6 divided by 3, or 4 meters. Lastly, we have four antinodes. L is equal to how many wavelengths this time? Brett? Four. It's not oh, equal to two. four wavelengths. Two. two. We have one wavelength right here, and then another wavelength right here. So we have two wavelengths. In other words, the wavelength is equal to the length divided by two, or six over two, or three meters. So now, we can figure out the velocity of the wave. We simply multiply the frequency times the wave. So I need each of these multiplied by one another.
I'm ready. Uh, the first one is 16.0032. 13 13.053. 13 13.3 repeat. Does that work? Will really work on B16? Okay, it's actually 13.6. Good, good, because that looked yeah. entirely wrong. 13.6, thank you. That's okay. <laughs> Can I have a couple more same things at 3.6? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Fair enough. Last one. Twelve point six nine three nine. Okay, now I need the average velocity for each one of those. For the all three or all fours. What do we get? Thirteen point one seven zero one. So notice, we figured out the velocity of the speed of the wave just doing a wave pulse. But then we went through and we figured out all sorts of stuff having to do with standing waves, and we got something very similar. In fact, if we look at our relative error, the observed minus the accepted divided by the accepted times 100, we get, let's use the 12.32, uh, we we'll use the 12.32. 3287 minus our 13.1701 divided by 13.1701 multiplied by 100, we get what for a relative error? negative 6.4% error between the two, calculating the speed of this wave uh, two entirely different ways. And nothing against my human timers, but in general, humans are not very good at doing this, as I think you all heard. It's okay. So I consider that pretty darn good, considering everything we did. Right there. Again, the whole point of that was to show that a wave pulse is what's going on in your standing waves. It's just going back and forth. It's just that they're all constructively and destructively interfering with one another as it happens. 